Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to be making a really fun shutter card. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start off, we're using the shutter card and the shutter card add-on dies. And for paper, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So I've got my cardstock and now let's take these dies. We'll need two of those rectangles. That will be the card base. We'll need two of this piece as well. That will create the shutter card mechanism. And then we'll also need two of that. That will create the belly band. And then from the shutter card add-on, we're going to need this rectangle with the circle in the middle. So I die cut all of those pieces. And now using my stitched wood grain die, we're gonna create a wood grain pattern in all of those pieces that we just die cut. So to do this, I'm just going to place these face down on this die, and this won't actually cut anything. It will just create that uh, look, that wood grain look into our cardstock. And I'll do the same thing for this add-on piece as well. And then I run that through the machine. So I did that for all of these little pieces, and you can see you get this beautiful wood grain effect. So now with ground espresso and brush corduroy, I'm going to give these the look of wood grain. I'm starting with that brush corduroy. I'm gonna place that all over this panel. And then I'll just add some shadows here with the ground espresso, just kind of rubbing it into the, where the, like the green of the wood is, where the knots in the wood are. So I'm just adding a little bit of a darker shadow there. And then I'll come back with the brush corduroy and just try to blend that out a little bit and don't worry too much here we just we're going just for some light and dark areas we'll be doing a little bit more to this later on so don't worry if it doesn't look perfect and then I did decide to go back to the ground espresso and go all the way around the edges with that just to kind of define those edges a little bit better now I'll do that for all the rest of these pieces, the same exact thing. Now I'll take some ground espresso and a little bit of water from my Distress Sprayer. And with a small brush, I'm going to spatter all of these pieces. And that's going to give a little bit more of an aged effect to the wood grain. And you can see that there. Now with some clear acetate from Lawn Fawn, I've cut a piece to the size of this panel and you can kind of see that off to the right there. And then with some score tape, I'm placing tape all around the back of this. And then I'm removing the backing from the tape and I'm going to go ahead and attach this. I'm using my Nuvo Surface Sweep Brush, which is a really super soft brush, just to uh, dust off any any lint or anything that's stuck to that acetate. So now that I have that attached, I'm going to place a porthole in here. So I'm using the porthole frames dies, and this one will fit nicely right inside that circle opening. So again, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I've run that through the die cutting machine. Now with weathered wood, and black soot, I'm going to go ahead and apply that weathered wood all over this porthole. And then with the black soot, I'm just gonna kinda go around the edges here, just to give a little shadow around those edges. And then I'll blend that out just a little bit with that weathered wood. Using my glue tube, I'm going to attach this to the acetate. So because this porthole was a smaller than that opening, I had to put the acetate in there to have a place for that to sit. So that worked out really well. Now I did die cut a second porthole the exact same size, and then I die cut a circle from my outside in stitched circle stackables dies, and that will fit right behind that porthole. And we're gonna set those aside for now. Those will be for the belly band that we're gonna be creating a little bit later on. Now with the Ahoy Matey stamp set, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this, these palm trees in the opening of that window. So I just wanna make sure that I line this up 
And now I can go ahead and pick up that stamp. I'll remove that panel for now so I can do my stamping. And I'm using the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. This is a permanent black ink. So I can go ahead and stamp that. Now with the Gina K Masking Magic, I'm going to stamp that again. So I'm just going to place this down. Before I take my stamp out here, I'm just going to stamp this on the masking paper. Now that will cover that image while we do some inking. So I'm going to cut that out. I didn't cut it fully out yet. I will a little bit later. I didn't want it to be too delicate at this point. So. I'll show you in a minute here. We'll, we'll cut some more away from that. And then I also want to mask that off. So I'm placing the mask down over the bottom trunk area of my palm trees. And now I can go ahead and stamp the, uh, the land or the beach that the trees are going to be on. And it'll look like that line goes behind those trees. So I've removed the mask there. And now you can see that that'll line up perfectly in our window. So using light green and green, I'm using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and the blender pen. I'm gonna go ahead and blend these out. So I started with the lighter color. I'm adding a little shadow towards the base of those leaves and then just pulling it out towards the tips. And with light brown and brown, I'm going to do the little coconuts. I'm just cleaning off the blender pen by scribbling it onto some scrap paper until it goes clear. Now I'll use beige to do the trunks of these trees and I've put the darker uh, color on one side and just pulling it over towards the other side just to give a little shadow. And then going back to the two browns, the dark brown and the beige, I'm going to do the beach area here. So now I'm going to cut this mask a little bit more detailed now. And now I'm going to place it back over this image so that we can go ahead and do the sky. So I'm just pressing that down really well. And I do need a mask for the beach now as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that. And I'll go ahead and cut that out. I'm removing the backing and I'll place that right over that beach area. So now we have two masks on there. So to do the sky, uh, first I do wanna tape this down with a little bit of my Tombow tape runner, just to hold that in place, and that'll come right off when we're done. So I'm placing some purple tape right along the horizon line. So you wanna make sure this is nice and straight. You wanna make sure you press that down really well. So to do the sky, I'm starting with the bright persimmon distress oxide. And I'm going to keep it the darkest right along this uh, line here. And then I'm going to go to the next color. So I wanna get a nice dark coating here. And then for the next color, I'm using mustard seed. And I'm going to go and blend these two together. And you do wanna be careful when you're going around the mask, you wanna kinda of pat the ink on and push out away from the mask um, because it is kind of delicate. This is a small mask, so you do wanna be somewhat careful. And then with the squeezed lemonade, I'm gonna blend that right up to the top of the sky here. And I will use that squeezed lemonade all over just to blend everything in really nicely. Now I can go ahead and remove that mask. And then we could do the lower section, which will be the ocean. So I'm going to remove that mask. And you will see when I remove this, there's one little piece of the sky there between the leaves on the trees that did not get done. So we're gonna do that in a minute. So let's go ahead and place that mask back down over the beach. 
and I'm wiping off that purple tape so that I can use it again. And then I'll heat set this because the tape really won't stick if that ink above is too wet. So I'm lining it up right along that line that we already have. And you wanna go above it just a little tiny bit so there's a little bit of overlap. Now I'm using my Faded Jeans Distress Oxide ink to do the, the ocean. And I want it to be the darkest at the bottom. So then I'll go to Salty Ocean And then the last color I'm using is the brand new Salvage Patina, which I just got and I just think is so pretty. So I thought that would give us a nice combination of colors here. So just make sure that mask is in place there. And then again, kind of pat your ink on around it and then blend those, those colors together. So I can go ahead and remove the mask and the purple tape. And here's where you'll see I just cut that mask a little bit more just to get in between those leaves there. So I'm going to place that down one more time. And you could have cut this detail right out of the gate, but I did it in sections here. So either way is fine. I just didn't want it to be too delicate. So now I'm just adding a little bit more of that right persimmon right in the sky there. So once that was done, I'm placing the mask back on that little island and I'm placing a piece of scrap paper over that with a little bit of purple tape. I'm gonna hold that down because I wanna spatter the ocean with a little bit of water just to add some bubbly texture here. And then I wanna add a little bit of sparkle to this as well. So I'm using the Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust. And you do want to shake that really well. And then I'm squeezing a little bit into some of that leftover water there. And I'll spatter the bottom part of this panel. And that'll give us a nice sparkle. So I'll set that aside to dry and remove that mask. And now this panel is all set. So let's move on to the UR Sublime stamp and die set. And we're gonna be using quite a few of these images. And I'll ink these up using the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And again, I'm gonna stamp multiples of these, especially of the seaweed and some of the little fish. And I did stamp a lot more than I needed because I do wanna create another card uh, off camera so I do have some extras here but starting with the pale rose I'm going to start coloring in some of this coral. I colored all those the exact same way and then for these little fern looking leaves I'm using the light green and the green just adding the darker green right at the base and then pulling that out towards the tip of these leaves. And then for these larger fish, I'm using the fluorescent yellow and the fluorescent orange to start off with. And I think I've mentioned this before, but these fluorescent inks have a little bit different texture to them. They, they blend a little bit differently. And what I did decide to do here is add a little bit of orange to this once I was done. I just thought it needed a little bit more of a shadow here. but that will give it kind of that fluorescent look. So now let's do the lobster and I'm using the wine red. And I'm just adding a shadow down one side of the little lobster and then I'll pull that over towards the left. Now to do the uh, seaweed here, I'm using fluorescent yellow and fluorescent green. And then for these little fish, I'll do them all in purple. Just adding purple at the bottom and pulling towards the top. And for the bubbles, I'm using haze blue. And then for the little scuba diver, I'm using the peacock blue which is a really beautiful 
dark blue it's just I love this color this is one of my favorite colors so I'm just going to add some shadows here and blend that out now you will see that later on that I did color that other little scuba diver for another card that I'm making so I think I did that in some purpley tones but I will list all the colors down below so if you're not sure you could check the listing below and also on my blog so now I'm using the black to do some of the, the flippers, the belt, and then the little mask for the snorkeling. And then I'm using flesh color for the skin and platinum brown for the scuba tank and for the little helmet. And we'll leave that the lightest at the top. So I've got the coordinating dies. I'm going to go ahead and tape those down with some purple tape and I'll run those through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And we have everything stamped and colored. Now with the smooth sailing stamp set, I'm going to grab the lighthouse, the boat, and that anchor. And later on, we'll be using those birds as well. So again, I've, I colored these off camera, but again, the colors are listed below. And I'm just going to tape those down with some purple tape and run those through the die cutting machine. Now I want to create the little embellishment for the belly band. So I'm starting with the right persimmon and I've placed a little bit right in the center of this circle. Then I'm using the mustard seed again. And then I'll use that squeezed lemonade just to blend those two out. Now with the lighthouse, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that down. And I did decide to cut away a little bit of that excess so that wouldn't be too bulky when I glue down the porthole frame. So I'm just cutting away a little bit of excess there. And now I can go ahead and glue these together. And also from this smooth sailing set, I'm going to grab the little rays of light for the lighthouse. I'm just placing them on an acrylic block and I'll just stamp those. And that adds a lot to our little image here. And then for that little boat, I'm gonna grab those little portholes, those little windows for the boat, and then I'm going to stamp those as well. And I did color those in with a little bit of black off camera. I just added a little shadow to those. So now going back to our panel, we're going to be placing these little flag pieces right inside the card here. So I'm folding them on that score line and pressing that out with my bone folder. And those are gonna sit right inside the card here. And I, I don't know if you can see, but there's score lines there and they're on an angle just like the little tab is. So you're gonna line those right up with those angle score lines. I'm adding some score tape to the, the tabs and I'm removing the backing. So for right now, I'm going to set that aside so that I can fold the card. So I'm folding these two sides in towards me. This will create a gatefold card. And I'm just pressing those out with the bone folder. So now I'll add the shutter card uh, mechanism here. So I'm lining it up with those two scores and along that score line and I'm pressing that down and that'll pick up that little shutter card piece. Now I'll do the same thing for the other side again using those little markings that are that that the die created and then lining it up with that score line as well. And then once I have that lined up, I'll close that front flap and pick up that little shutter card piece. 
So now we have those two pieces that will create the shutter card. And you do want to make sure you overlap those. So one will one of the little points will be on top and one will be on the bottom. It doesn't matter which one, you just want to do them opposite so that it will create that shutter effect. So now I'm folding this these two tabs on the top and the bottom towards me. And then we can go ahead and attach this panel. So I'll use some score tape here and place it on each of these tabs. Now I can remove the backing and I'll go ahead and attach the bottom section first. So I'm going to line that up right with that tab and along the bottom of the card. And now I want to remove the backing from the top, but before I assemble this, again, I want to make sure one of those little flags is underneath and one is on top. And then again, I can go ahead now and put this flap right in place. I'm just going to glue it to that tab at the top. I'm pressing that down with the bone folder. Now you can see that we have that cute little shutter card. And this is just so much fun. I love this. So now let's go ahead and put the panels on the front of the card. And I did want to keep the front of the card fairly simple. So I'm going to attach those two wood grain panels and then that little lighthouse will go on the belly band. Before we do that, let's do the inside of the card. So I've got all these little pieces that we colored and die cut and I'm going to start assembling these. I did want to mention here, you don't want anything to interfere with that shutter card mechanism. So you want to make sure that you keep it away from that. So for this little boat, I'm going to place it off towards the right hand side of that mechanism, just so it won't get in the way. I've added the little anchor to my boat. And again, I'm sliding it off to the right here a little bit, and then I'll just cut away any excess. I'm just using some scrap paper to press that down a little bit and then I'm cutting away the, the excess on the side there. Then I'll go ahead and add all my little pieces. And I do want some of them to just kind of hang over the card and I'll cut those away just so it looks like the, the scene continues on. And again, I'm just snipping away the excess there. And then I went ahead and attached the other items off camera. And so now we have all of our little pieces attached. Now I did want to add some birds to the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp a couple of those birds. Again, those are from the Smooth Sailing stamp set. And now I can go ahead and add these panels to the front of the card. So again, I'm going back to the glue tube and I'll just center these. Now these two pieces here again, create that belly band. So I'm going to fold on that tab. And then there's another score line and I'll fold there as well. I had a little bit of ink on there, so I'm just using my sand eraser to erase that little bit of ink that I had there. So now I've placed some glue on the tab and I can go ahead and attach these two together. So I'm just going to line those up and attach those together. And then I can go ahead and close this up. So I'll add some score tape to this other tab as well. So that creates the little belly band. 
And I did decide to, where those pieces of paper meet, where the, the seams are, I'm gonna have on the front and the back of the card. So I'll slide that over my card. And now we can grab that little embellishment and attach it. You do wanna make sure you don't put glue at the very top of the circle or the bottom of the circle because that could get stuck to your card. So I'm just pressing that tape out with the bone folder so that I can easily remove the backing. And then I'll go ahead and glue that down. And again, just making sure that there's no tape up above there, just the width of the belly band. Now I'll use my Uniball Signal white gel pen and I'll add highlights to all of these little items. And that will just bring everything to life here. So I did that for all of these little pieces. And I'm adding a little bit to the porthole as well, just to give it more of a reflection on either side. I did that for both of these. So now going to the Life is Good stamp set, I'm going to grab the, the sentiment Life is Good and I'm using this simple wavy banners dies to do a little banner for the inside of the card. Going back to the salvage patina, I'm just going to go all the way around the edges. So I stamped and die cut that little banner off camera and I'm just inking up around the edges of that. And then I'll go ahead and attach that to the lower part of this center of the card. So let's take a closer look at the card. And again, we kept the front fairly simple and nice and plain so that when you open it up, you just have this explosion of color and that cute little shutter card effect. We've got a lot going on here. And again, that shutter is just so fun. I can think of a million things I can do with this. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.